Okay, so welcome to the forgiveness workshop. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being here live. Thank you for being here if you're watching the replay. Um, please, if you are live, if you don't mind muting your microphone so we don't have a lot of kind of cross uh cross pollination i was going to say that's totally the wrong word like just lots of background noise then can you do that but i will be answering questions that you put in the chat and um at the end we'll have some time for for longer form questions if you have them um and also if i if i end up kind of coming in and out of reception let me know because i am outside this is the first time that I've done a Zoom in Costa Rica in the middle of the jungle outside, so my internet might go. Um, so just if, if you can't get my attention, just you can unmute yourself and be like, we can't hear you. But I'm just going to launch into um, launch into this for everyone. Um, okay, so firstly, who am I? Because I know there's a lot of new people here, which I'm so very grateful for, but also there's past clients and people that have been um, in my community for a while. Again, very grateful for you being here today in this moment. I am Maria. I'm a spiritual transformational coach and healer. I'd like to say that I speak the language of the soul because I help support people in their spiritual self-development journey, in their awakenings, in their healings. And this is mainly because I myself have gone through some huge awakenings, some huge dark nights of the soul at de various different initiation points in my life, right? Um, and we all do that, right? How we all deal with them is, is very different. The way that I've dealt with them is by really getting into the understanding of it and, and, and then being a teacher of it, being an embodied teacher of it. So they are very much the foundations of my teachings, um, which a lot of you know, if you know me, right? And, and definitely as well, because if you read the email about my journey to Costa Rica, then, you know, it, it's embodied I, like the and I'm going to go into more of the depth of where how forgiveness plays into that but it's you know um I've lived this forgiveness frequency that I'm going to be speaking to so at the forefront of my work is emotional and energetic intelligence and working with the body to release traumatic experiences to release stagnant emotions and to regulate the nervous system Personally, as a child, I suffered quite a lot of emotional abuse that resulted in me having CPTSD. It's a complex post-traumatic stress disorder. Uh, I had extreme anxiety. And then as I got older, that turned into depression. And as I got older still, it led to like me drinking a lot, you know, numbing, distractions, going out a lot, taking recreational drugs, like doing all the things like teens and 20 year olds do. But then I started having spiritual awakenings around the age of like 25. So around 16 years ago, I started healing from all of that. So what I've learned most in my journey and what I share and teach is this power of us being multidimensional beings right and this energetic aspect of life that has been forgotten and that isn't talked about in the mainstream narrative and I'm sure you've heard it all before and especially if you follow me you've definitely heard it all before and if you've worked with me you've lived it before but we are 98% energy we are energy and our frequency is everything and so that's how we're going to be looking at forgiveness oh let me just admit someone into it that's how we're going to be looking at forgiveness today is we're not going to be looking at it as a rational concept. We're going to be looking at forgiveness as a healing frequency. So even though you may have, you know, done forgiveness practices before or read about forgiveness or heard people speak on forgiveness, it's more than likely going to be a more of a rational understanding of forgiveness. Or if you don't mind just, um, hey, Luz. If you don't mind just unmuting your sound, just because there's a lot of cross sound going on. Um, yeah, so a lot of it will be, I'm hoping that what you're going to be getting from today is going to be a different understanding of forgiveness and being able to embody it in a different way. Um, so 
what I want to start with is I'm going to guide us into a little meditation just to open the space, just to set the intention for the space, just to make this whole process that much more potent for you, um, just to energetically close this circle so that it's kind of a safe space for us all. So if you are somewhere that you can just relax, close your eyes and just be in the moment of this meditation. And I want you to begin with just breathing very deeply into the body. The power of the breath is so powerful. So breathing deeply through the nose into the body, allowing that breath to go as deep into the body as possible and exhaling. Just making a note that you've had a day before this. Your energy has been out and about in the world today. And just calling back that energy that you've put out into the world so far today, just calling it back into this moment and doing it with your breath. So breathing in and just bringing, setting the intention just to bring all parts of you that you may have left out and about, bring it all back into the center of your heart with that breath. And then as you exhale, just allow yourself to ground into the seat beneath you. And just do three more breaths like this, intentionally drawing back your energy from situations you may have been in, places, Just grounding your energy down. And just bringing your full awareness into this space, into this moment. And I like to set space and create intention through prayer to our highest self to our divine mother father life force energy god universe however you feel comfortable connecting divine mother father god highest organic frequency of light and love Thank you for this moment. Thank you for this prayer. We ask that we set the intention for the highest vibration, highest frequency of forgiveness to be present, to be made known to us as we move through this workshop together. Allowing wherever we're at with our forgiveness process, to be wherever we're at and for us to be okay with that, for us to be able to take what we need to take, integrate what we need to integrate and heal to a level that we are ready to heal at. We ask that our highest self, our highest intuition, our highest knowing be present with us as we move through this workshop and to allow our unconscious, our shadow, our little inner child to know that it's safe as we move through this process, to know that it's held. And we ask that only the highest frequencies be present during this entire workshop. Thank you, thank you, thank you, and so it is. Okay, so like I said, in this workshop, we're gonna be looking at and diving into forgiveness as an energetic healing frequency. And we're gonna be looking at what happens if we don't acknowledge 
and work with and bring awareness to the frequency of, of forgiveness consistently, how that can impact our lives and look at how that can bring about resentment, resentment, right? And before we go into a short practice, a short but potent practice of um, forgiving ourselves, and I'm going to explain a little bit more about that when we get closer to it today, because our time and energy is limited to this workshop, and and uh, forgiveness is such a big topic. We're going to focus on understanding forgiveness forgiveness at a deeper level but we're just going to be forgiving an aspect of self that is creating restriction in life currently and sometimes when I speak to people about this they're like well actually I think this is creating the resistance in my life it's the fact that this person did this or that this happened to me or that life is like this that life isn't supporting me right and it, and it's putting our emphasis on restriction being created by outside forces and outside people, right? But there will always, even if that is the case, there will always be a thread connecting it back to you somehow, right? And when we can access that thread of energy that is linking it to us and we can use the power of forgiveness to forgive ourselves in that, in that whole spectrum, then it's such a deep healing and it's one of the most potent steps that you can take, right? We activate a powerlessness by assuming that everything is at the fault of outside forces. Coming into our power, like the first step of that is to admit that we are the ones who can make change, right? Even if it's just to forgive the fact that we blamed others solely, right? If we can't grasp onto any other way that we where we are at um, need to be forgiven, right? But as we go through this, and as I speak more to this, hopefully it's going to open up an understanding of like, oh, wow, of course I can forgive myself in this way, in this way, in this way. And it's going to become a lot clearer. Like we live in a society where everything, all our attention is put outside of us. And so it's very difficult for us to look inward and be like, wow, I can see how all of this is affecting me and how I am the one holding the pin that keeps all of this together, right? So this is just a really powerful way to take our gaze from looking out and take our power from being outside of us and bringing it in. I hope that makes sense. And this isn't about saying none of what you've been through is other some a fault of someone else or or what's creating stagnancy in your life is the fault of someone else or something else but it's it's giving you your power back to be like there is so much that you can do even if no one else outside of you changes even if situations outside of you aren't actually changing and i'm going to give you an example of this of why or how i'm even here right the only thing that changed was me and my decision making um so yeah i just wanted to make that clear and you know and of course it's linked to other people and other situations like our, we are all interrelational but also you know what keeps us in patterns and keeps us in conditionings is also linked to and if you subscribe to this our past lives right we're multi-dimensional beings there is so there are so many contracts that we may have um signed up for or, or, or vowed to that are keeping us in specific places. So working with forgiveness in those realms as well is really powerful, which is something that I'm gonna be doing in workshops moving forward. Um, and also thinking about our ancestral lineages, there, there is a lot that can be done regarding forgiveness to release the wounding of our ancestral lineages. You know, so there's going to be a series of deeper healing paid workshop that will follow on from this that I will talk about at the end if you want to go into deeper workings. So if you're wondering why I'm just going to be focusing on like our self forgiveness on, on a smaller level in this in this workshop, it's because, yes, of course, there's a whole host of of um, ways that we can forgive and the way that the frequency of forgiveness works, but it's just such an expansive topic. We can't go through it all in one session. I also wanna caveat this workshop 
by saying that there can be some deeply traumatic experiences such as physical, sexual, mental, emotional abuse that, you know, that may come up at some point, right, for you. And when, it, when, we, when we're dealing with something like forgiveness, right? But that is a much more sensitive and pro pro profound process that should be done one-to-one -one with a qualified practitioner that is trauma-informed, that knows how to lead you through that process as, as gently as possible. And as much as I want this workshop to help everyone as much as possible, that kind of forgiveness, I can't support you in that when, we're, when we've opened this up to a group. It just wouldn't be um, in your best interest or my best interest for me to be able to do that for you. So um, if, if, if it's something you want to reach out to me for privately, then I'm happy for you to do that. If, if this particular workshop triggers anything moving forwards, then please come to me. You can either work with me on it or I can put you in the direction of working with somebody else if you don't want to work with me privately. Um, but I just wanted to make that clear. So, um, as I said, hopefully we're going to be delving into a new layer of forgiveness, right? A an understanding of forgiveness. So what is it? I like to describe forgiveness as being the key that unlocks deeper residual denser frequencies that we hold in the body. Resentment, guilt, anger, rage, powerlessness, sadness, grief, jealousy, right? All of these emotions um, frequency wise are in the denser aspect right they 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 sit deep in the body they're often shame is another one they're often pushed down by us because we don't want to feel them because they feel bad our psyche is trying to protect us from feeling them because when we felt them originally it was not a good it wasn't a good experience right now many of us know how to process emotion mentally some people don't want to process it at all right and that's when it gets even deeper 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 down for those of us that do we we can process it mentally right we also know how to process emotion so it doesn't get stuck in the body by by crying or moving the emotion through the body by noticing it feeling it allowing its release right then there's the next level which is somatic release using something like breath work using movement using energy healing right deep shadow work what I've noticed is that this work, even though it's really deep, when we work somatically with the body to, to release emotion, it only went so far still, right? It only, that, of course, it, it does release a lot. And a lot, a lot of the time it releases things till it's completely gone. But there were times where things would repeat. And yes, we go through layers of healing right? We go through layers. We, it, it, healing is a spiral. It's not linear. So we, we, our highest self allows us to experience what we need to experience at the level that we are available to experience it at, what we're ready to experience it at, what we have the tools to experience it at. Otherwise we're plunging ourselves into, you know, re-traumatizing ourselves. So it is layered work. But there were times where with either clients or with myself, that I realized that we were coming back into a, a cycle where we'd already been. And what I've been shown and, and how I've now practiced forgiveness is that it, it draws everything to a need to close. It closes that energetic loop, so to speak, so that we are not completely um, losing, draining our energy through all of these deeper emotions, right, that, that we are holding. So if you imagine your nervous system as one of those like kids science projects, like the circuit board that has a switch at one end and then a light bulb at another, and there's various different connection points to allow the energy to move from the on switch all the way to the light bulb and lights the bulb. Now, often, you know, we feel an emotion and it triggers that switch of energy moving through the body because we, we're we just a pillar, a conductor of energy that we're connected to the energy above us and we ground the energy beneath us because we are energy, right? And we're a conductor of energy. Everything is energy. 
And so when we have that emotion move through us, if we don't allow ourselves to close the loop, then, and closing the loop means also forgiving ourselves, not just acknowledging that the emotion is there, not just understanding why the emotion is there, not just kind of reparenting ourselves through that emotion, but forgiving the, the fact that it exists in the first place and that we responded to it in a certain way, it has a completely different vibrational frequency. And it allows us to close that loop so that that light bulb can come on, so that we can fully ground that energy, so that we are not leaking energy, you know, often our nervous system is in fight, flight, freeze or form because we're, we're not able to close that loop and we're just expelling our energy. This is why often like I felt completely exhausted when I've not really done anything because my body is processing constantly, consistently processing this open loop of energy. And I feel like I'm doing you know healing or I feel like I'm taking a step forward or I'm on this path of healing but actually what was missing was this extra aspect of of being okay with what happened forgiving why it happened forgiving my my part in that forgiving the other person's part in that which can sometimes take a lot lot longer you know I am still with a, a couple of people in my life unable to fully forgive certain huge huge things we are all a working process at all times but even what we don't realize is even like the smallest of things can allow us to have that loop open and allow us to be leaking energy just the smallest of things like not following through on something and unconsciously not forgiving ourselves for that not explaining to ourselves why that's happening or understanding why that's happening and being okay and being at peace and actually facing it and not just being like, okay, I didn't wake up to go to the gym five days in a row. I never do it, right? But actually that will sit in your unconscious. The reason that you're doing that is not just because, I mean, sometimes it's just because you don't like going to the gym, but sometimes there's deeper self-sabotage issues going on that can come from something that's happened when you were younger where you you know don't like to now show up for yourself don't like to do things for yourself don't like to back yourself right and when we can truly look at ourselves and go right I notice that I'm doing this instead of pasting over it and being it oh I'm gonna do it tomorrow or I'll do it next time or that's just the way I am or even chastising yourself. God, I'm such a bad person. Oh, I never, I never follow through for myself. Da, 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 da. Whatever, however you choose to respond. So really bring awareness to how do you respond to yourself? How do you respond to yourself when something uncomfortable comes up? When you let yourself down or an uncomfortable feeling comes up or you're triggered into feeling something or experiencing something that you didn't want to experience. How do you show up for yourself? bring awareness to that first and foremost, then really look at, you know, this is the classic reparenting that I do with the inner child work, but, but look at how would you speak to a child that is now, that it has been speaking like that? How would you want to speak to yourself if you were a child to give yourself the utmost love and respect and back yourself in the best way possible? And then add as another layer to that and add the forgiveness where you really, really admit to yourself what you've been doing. Then that just changes the game, right? Because what that brings is a layer of peace. Forgiveness is the gateway to peace, which is the highest emotional vibrational frequency that you can access, right? And like I said, my work is about supporting people to access their highest version of self through their emotional and spiritual awakening. To assimilate to the frequency of peace is the most powerful thing that you can do for yourself, right? And that's why forgiveness is coming through as a huge aspect of my work now and why I'm even doing this workshop because I had that realization. <sighs> So let me know that everything is making sense and you're, you're with me here and you can still hear, hear me, by the way. I think, I think you can. 
Um, it's so hot, like my laptop is so hot, I can't even touch the, I'm not going to complain because I know it's freezing back in the UK, but, you know, we all have our, <laughs> our things that we've got issues with right now. Um, right, so let me know that that makes sense, that this, this idea that forgiveness is the closing of a loop that allows you to ground your energy and fully release the energy that can be creating chaos within your energetic system and bringing you back into patterns that are keeping you stagnant, right? Or keeping you locked into certain ways of being, right? The opposite part of the spectrum of forgiveness is this vibrational frequency of resentment, of guilt, of grief, you know, those denser frequencies of shame that are stuck, that get stuck in the body. And this is why often we don't get to reach the level of forgiveness or activate that frequency of the potency of the frequency of forgiveness is because it's quite difficult to get there because to get there we have to see things for what they truly are right we have to really be honest with ourselves of how things are and see where we may not have responded in the best of ways to ourselves or to other people we have to shed light on everything we have to see truth as it is and again we have not been conditioned to do that we have not been conditioned that that is safe that's a very unsafe thing also our psyche believes that it's a very unsafe thing because it's going to potentially trigger those feelings of guilt, of grief, of resentment, of shame, of all those things, right? And so that's why practicing true forgiveness as the gateway to peace is very difficult, right? But the, but the thing is, even though our psyche is so intelligent in trying to keep us safe, what it's actually doing is still perpetuating all of those feelings. It's still perpetuating those cycles of feeling stuck, of, of feeling stagnant, of self-sabotage, that kind of cyclical, it's still doing all of that. We're still stuck in that loop, but we're doing it in a, from a place of control. So unconsciously we're, 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 we're controlling it and taking it to the next level of forgiveness is actually going way beyond our, our area of control because we're not used to it. We don't know what that's like right? It's easier to sit in, in resentment. It's easier to sit in anger. It's easier to sit in what we know and what we felt because that's what we know, right? Um, but that's what it means to not be in our full power as an energetic being. We are so capable. We are capable of so much more than what our rational mind allows us to believe. Like, even if you're at the top of your game in your life right now, in every way, you are capable of so much more, right? But we have been conditioned to kind of keep ourselves small, especially as women, right? That, that's a big thing. And especially if we look at kind of like past life wounding, ancestral wounding, all of that stuff, we are keeping ourselves so much smaller than what we are capable of. And that's because there's a lot of, of those denser frequencies that are holding us back. Even if they're unconscious, we all hold onto them. They are there. And one of the only ways to bring light to them and to release them is to bring that frequency of forgiveness to them. I'm gonna like, go through that explanation, the example of the story of how I've ended up here in Costa Rica for three months, right? Which is, was never meant to happen, was never ever meant to happen as, as it's happened, but it's just a, an example of how the frequency of forgiveness has changed a lot for me, but also how the frequency of forgiveness allows us, when we clear through these denser frequencies that you may not even realize are there, right? You may realize some of them are there, you may not. The more that we can 
clear our field and clear out those denser frequencies and, and, and assimilate to this forgiveness, peace kind of timeline, the more that we can hear that higher self, the more that we can hear the guidance of our higher being. And what I mean by that is we are multidimensional beings. You are not just your identity, Maria, a human on planet Earth. You are not just that, right? You are a multifaceted spectrum of light. You exist in, in, in far more than what you see as your reality here. And what you see as your reality is what you allow yourself to create with your other multi-spectrum versions of self, right? Bear with me. This might be like, what is she talking about? But the more that you can clear through your self-doubt, yourself, when, when we don't, when we can't forgive ourselves, when we're trapped in this like lack of trust for ourselves, this, this lack of self-worth, this idea of blaming ourselves for things, this idea of not feeling good enough, this idea that, you know, who are we to have this? Sorry. This idea of playing small, because who are we to, to own everything, right? The more that we kind of chastise ourselves for that and kind of blame ourselves for that, the more that we're accentuating this, we can't trust ourselves, this idea of like, we can't trust ourselves, we're not good enough to trust ourselves. But the more that we can forgive ourselves for the things that we've done wrong, for the decisions that we've made that were wrong, the more that we can release ourselves from this, like this holding on to, like Emily, you were saying, like I made these decisions when I was young and I know they were silly decisions because I was young, but I'm still holding on to them. Holding on to them energetically is not allowing you then to fully trust yourself to step out into each new moment of your life, to, to, to be fully able to own your full energy of self in each and every moment moving forwards, to not trust when you're hearing that intuition, to not trust when you have a knowing. We are more than our five senses, right? We are way more than our five senses, but how many of us actually live by those other senses, that knowing, that energetic frequency? And that, that is what we are more of. We are fully, we are 98% energy, yet we don't access that part of ourselves. We don't trust that part of ourselves. And what I found in activating the frequency of forgiveness for self and all the other ways, is that my level of self-trust, my level of understanding of self, my level of self-worth, all of that, all of the things that relate to me in relationship to me, when I've strengthened that through forgiveness, it's meant I have become so strong in my knowing about my life and my direction for my life, right? So the example that I want, that I've put in the email that I just wanted to speak about because it just encompasses the entire thing that I'm trying to say using so many words, but it, this is just it. I've done a lot of work to heal past wounds, do inner child healing, mother wound healing, father wound healing, all of the things I've done, you know, multidimensional healing. I've done past life healing. I've done ancestral healing, you know, I have over the years, over the past 16 years that I've been doing this work, connected to higher, higher realms of my intuition and self-trust and self-knowing, right? The last 18 months, and I know we've all been in this like weird pandemic world where everything has been completely, there's a lot of forgiveness that needs to happen around that, by the way. A lot of forgiveness of like, outside things that have happened, how we responded to those things, deaths that have had so much forgiveness. If the world took, just spent the next year in forgiveness, it would be a completely different place, right? But I got plunged in the last 18 months into another deeper initiation to discover another layer of understanding of forgiveness, right? Life got so stagnant for me out of nowhere right my youngest child my baby got he was one at the time 
he got super sick. We were in and out of hospital, not only hospital, like A&E. So it was frantic. He couldn't breathe properly. He'd get a virus. He couldn't breathe. He'd be an A&E. He'd get a virus. He couldn't breathe. He'd be an A&E. My whole system was just in fight or flight the entire time, right? So I had to stop work. I couldn't, I couldn't host I couldn't, I didn't have the brain space to host this kind of thing, to, to, to be with people, to, to hold somebody else in their healing. I just couldn't do it. So I listened to my intuition and I stopped work. It went against everything that I knew, like I needed to make money for my family. I needed to have a purpose in life. Like that was my identity. I had to stop. There was a strain on our relationship because our, our, you know, our financial situation was getting really difficult. We were being plunged into like, you know, a cost of living crisis um, where we were living. You know, there was a deep heaviness in my being. There was a lot of anxiety and there was just this stagnancy. I don't know how to describe it, but it was like every time I tried to do something or make something or create something or move forwards in something, no. It was like the energy would get lost. It was just draining. It was just going. It, the, this is the loop that I'm talking about, that the energy wasn't coming through and then come moving into being grounded into conception, into creation. It was just being drained. I was exhausted the entire time. I was just looking after children the entire time. Like I just was in this space of like, I was going mad. And all the while there was this inner voice that was saying, you need to go to Costa Rica. And I was like, what? The, how the fuck am I going to get, like, I haven't got any money. We have money, but we can't just up and leave. My child's, one of my children's severely ill, always in hospital. Another child is in school. My partner can't work from anywhere but London. Like, my business is completely fucked. Like, how am I going to go to Costa Rica? Like, that is ridiculous. So I was like, no, nope, not for a long time. I just kind of ignored it, ignored it. Then the stagnancy got worse. The arguments got worse. The heaviness got worse. Like everything just got worse. I was just so stressed out. And so then I would like, I was sharing it with my partner. I was like, I think maybe we just need to move away and go away for a bit. And, and he was like, what are you mad? What are you talking about? Like, you're not working. How on earth do you expect us to be like, that's madness. Like there was just no rational understanding of it at all. I just knew I had to come to Costa Rica. I didn't know why. I've never been here. I kind of knew where it was in Central America. You know, I've seen pictures of it. It, it wasn't like I just need to go on holiday. I need to go to Costa Rica. I thought if, 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 at one point I was like, maybe Mexico. No, the voice, Costa Rica, Costa Rica. It made no sense. It was completely opposite of rational sense because actually coming here would have rationally on paper would have put us in a worse position. We wouldn't be near the hospitals and the doctors. My kid wouldn't be in school, so we'd be looking after them 24 seven. My partner wouldn't be able to work. I wasn't working. Where's the money gonna come from? It was, I just got so angry and frustrated because nothing made sense. And then it triggered this realization that actually I had a pattern of not following through with things that my intuition was guiding me towards. I had a really strong pattern. of, Even though I had a strong pattern of following through with my intuition, more so than most people that I know, right? Because it's not something that we do, but my capacity to actually follow my intuition, I was like not even meeting half of it. And there were so many things in my life that I just ignored my intuition on, right? One of those was the birth of my first child. One of, there's lots of things to do with my business where I haven't um, kind of let, allowed my intuition to lead and trust, trusted that. My career, I had a television career for 15 years. I could have done so much more than, with that than I actually did. I did not meet my potential because I didn't trust myself. I didn't allow myself to reach that. And all of this stuff came flooding through and I realized I needed to forgive myself for so many things, some of them really deep woundings, some of them that were, you know, that the, 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 the birth of my first son was so traumatic, it launched me into a deep, dark night of the soul. And a lot of that was to do with the fact that I didn't listen to my intuition from day dot with that birth. And I completely gave my power away. And so it just opened up this whole like spectrum of things that I was like, oh my God, 
there are so many things that I don't follow through on. And now I'm being given the most ridiculous thing to try and follow through on, like the most ridiculous thing to try and come to Costa Rica at the time of life that we are at. Maybe I need to do this. So I closed the loop. I went into a process of forgiving myself, you know, for all of the times that I didn't trust my intuition, going into other various types of healing around not trusting my intuition, forgiving others, like my partner who had a completely different way of thinking and of the world and seeing the world. You know, we all have a lot to do. since the pandemic as well. We all have, we've all like launched at each other for having different opinions. We've all like, you know, hated on other sections of society who have different ways of thinking because it's completely polarized us all, right? I needed to sit down and like forgive others, forgive myself for doing the things that I did and feeling the way that I felt. And then I needed to take action in the way that properly honored myself, right? I needed to actually follow through and listen to the voice that had no fucking rational sense whatsoever and I needed to back myself I think a lot of the time when we listen to our intuition we're looking for somebody else to go oh yeah that's right do that yeah that's okay do that no no one was going to say that to me because it was the most irrational thing so I needed to really stand up for myself and be like this is what we need to do I know it makes no sense but I actually trust that it's the right thing I trusted it I felt it the moment we made that decision and it took a lot. And the moment that Rich said, yeah, okay, let's do it. I freaked out and I was like, ah, okay, maybe I'm, making, maybe I'm gonna ruin my whole family's life by doing this and we're gonna be plunged into poverty and we're all gonna die somewhere in Costa Rica with no food. But I was like, okay, we're gonna do it. Let's just do it. We booked the flight. The moment that we booked the flight, I kid you not. And this is, this from the depths of my heart, this is true. Everything just <sighs> fell. Just the energy just fell. Rich got a call about a job that he could do whilst we are here, being paid the same money he would be being paid in London, doing absolutely everything remotely, which is unheard of in the industry that he works in. It just everything fell into place. We got here. It's been divine for the last month. I've got back into the flow of work. I'm back in service. I feel like, you know, I'm owning my power. My child's health is the touch wood, like protection of that is great. It, it's just all this land. And we needed to come to this land for something to shift for us. And it has taken me on a yet another deeper layer of understanding of healing so that then I can teach another deeper layer of understanding and healing. And there's something that I, you know, there's things that I need to integrate further in order for me to, to speak more about that. But we came here for a reason. There is a reason that we came here. And I know those reasons now, right? My highest self wanted us here for a reason. And I'm following the true path of my life, which allows me then to feel at peace, which allows me then to feel freedom within nothing really has changed we're the same people we're doing the same work yeah okay we're in a different place and the sun is shining and yeah it's great but nothing that we haven't won the lottery we nothing that dramatic has changed in our life yet everything has changed the feeling the frequency has changed there's a sense of freedom there's a sense of peace and i'm telling you this because we can all have that right and i'm sure there's going to be moments where i'm plunged into a darker place again but just to know that we can trust ourselves and forgive ourselves and bring ourselves into this peace and freedom you know we each have a path for our lives we each have a prophecy for our lives it's very individual and unique for all of us that doesn't follow a cookie cutter version of life that we've been led to believe that exists right we're all trapped in this kind of stagnant loop of mainstream life Educate childhood education, one career that we stick to our entire lives that's about achievement, that's about worth outside of ourselves, that's about materialistic gain and money, you know, a partner, a house, children, the daily grind of nine to five, you know, working towards that one, two week holiday a year that, you know, if we're lucky, we can get distractions from our truth, distractions from 
our emotions, our pain of who we really are, ignoring our intuition and following, you know, this narrative, retirement, death, like that is our, but actually the truth is so different. The truth is like, we could all be doing something completely different, should be doing something completely different that our own highest self, other versions of us are guiding us through this so-called life that are helping us create this reality based on making difficult decisions that this reality that I'm sat in now was created from making really difficult, courageously making really difficult decisions that if I hadn't forgiven myself for letting myself down so much and done all the other work around it, I wouldn't have been able to make, I wouldn't have been able to do, I wouldn't have been able to hear that that was what the guidance was. Is that making sense? Like I'm hoping that means something. Oh, there's lots in the chat. Um, I'll come to that in a minute, but I'm hoping it's um, it's making sense. Okay, good. So where are we? Okay, we're an hour in, okay. So I want you all to know that because you are energetic beings and you're not, because we're not guided to, we're not, le- we're not taught to, you're not living to your full energetic potential. Like there is so much that you're capable of. There is so much that is available to you. So if you are feeling this, st- this stuck and stagnant situation, these, these kind of repetitive cycles, this kind of heavy feeling, Just know that that is just there to show you where you need to look and go a little bit deeper, where you need to fully kind of show up for yourself. Like there was a point when I was in that 18 months and, you know, with all my training, with all the work that I've done, with with all the awareness that I have, the spiritual awareness that I have, I was like, why the fuck? am I in this stagnant space? I felt so sorry. I was like victim. Oh, life is creating this horrible stagnant life for me. You know, and I like, we're going to get into that space, but once allow yourself to be in that space, allow yourself to move through that space and then go, okay, what is this stagnancy showing me? Where do I need to, to shift into a frequency of forgiveness for myself, for the situation, for others, for life, for the fact that life may not have supported me, for the fact that I, whatever, right? And and we can go through some of the things in a moment. I've also been shown that forgiveness heals the heart, right? And this was a really strong thing that came through for me. Like our heart is our most potent electromagnetic field, right? Your heart, is what is in charge of your entire frequency, right? And when we can bring a frequency of forgiveness into ourselves, it allows our heart to open more. It allows us to be more in our power. It allows you to own your unique frequency, which then attracts, because energy is magnetic, it then attracts what is meant for you. And this is all like law of attraction, which is being spouted left, right and center by everyone now. Right. And it's kind of made it feel like. Like it's a what's the word? Like it's a fad, like it's this thing to like you're into yoga, you're into law of attraction. You no, it's a fact of life. Like it's not just a, a fad. It's 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 been talked about on such a shallow level that it doesn't, we don't understand that the depth of the resonance of it, but your heart, your heart is your electromagnetic field. Your electromagnetic field is what draws situations to you, is what draws opportunity to you, is what draws people to you, is what draws emotions to you, right? It draws your life to you like a a magnet. And so when we shut down our heart, which we all do with the, with the, you know, um, guilt, with pain, with, you know, uh, protection, with jealousy, with all of those denser frequencies, we're just dampening that electromagnetic field. And so not we're not resonating out in the world as much as we can be. Again, we're not in our power. To be in our power is to be in our heart, is to allow our heart to be open and to be vulnerable. Vulnerability for me was a huge no-no. 
hell no. Like even when I would tell these stories in workshops, I would keep it to the bare minimum run through it because I didn't want to tell people about myself. Like I am now much more comfortable talking about me and my life and, and the things that mean a lot to me. I'm, I'm starting to own my vulnerability a lot more because forgiveness is allowing me to heal the heart frequency, you know? And when there's disturbance in our heart fre frequency with those resentment frequencies, pain frequencies, all the freak shame, all of that stuff, you're just closing down your heart. So just allow that different perspective of forgiveness to move through you and to resonate with you that it heals the heart and the heart is your compass for life right it's your it's it's what creates your reality along with your mind and everything but it's the field the electromagnetic field of your reality um and you know the the, the, the frequency of forgiveness is often overlooked because it takes a lot of courage to go there. I think I mentioned this before, but it takes a lot of self-discipline, a lot of self-awareness, a lot of emotional intelligence to truly forgive. And often what we need to, to conjure up that level of forgiveness, um, what generally happens is our psyche goes, no, -uh, it's not, it's not safe. It's not safe. And it, usually it's the unconscious. It's not safe. Sometimes it's the conscious. We have to admit that there's something that we needed to really see. The truth. I needed to, to see the truth that I have let myself down on so many levels, so many times. Right? And it's different to not knowing that you're not worthy. You know, when you're like, oh, or you think that you could be a better person to actually admit I fucked up by doing, making this decision. I thought I was doing the best thing for myself. I wasn't, I was letting myself down. I was weak in that moment, but it's okay. It's like admitting, forgiving needs compassion. Where does compassion come from? The heart frequency, right? So it's all interlinked. It, it's difficult to admit those things or this person did this thing to me that's the most painful thing I can admit to myself, right? Like my psyche had played it down and didn't allow me to really hold and understand the truth of what that means and how that's impacted my life. It's a lot for me to admit that that happened. And now I've got to try and forgive that person. Like it's a lot, but the reason it's a lot is because it holds so much potent magic for healing. It holds so much potency for expansion. The best things don't come easy. It's simple, but it's not easy, right? Um, it's a very complex kind of, it's not as, it's not, it's not as easy as saying, hey, just, just forgive yourself or just forgive that situation or just forgive so-and-so. There will be smaller things that are easy to forgive, but the bigger things that are probably going to create more resonance or that are creating a deeper restriction in your life, they're going to be harder. Um, so just bear that in mind and have compassion for yourself and you will be ready to forgive what you need to forgive at the time that you need to forgive it. Maybe you're here today or you were drawn to this today because you've reached a level of like, actually, I can't keep doing this thing that I'm doing or I can't be still stuck in this cycle. And I've heard of forgiveness before and I know about forgiveness. What is she talking about? But maybe this is actually now resonating at a different level for you, a deeper level for you, a level where you might actually go, OK, now I'm actually ready to do something about it. Or actually, now I know I realize that I'm going to have the courage to do this. And when you do do it, and this is coming from experience, it's like, you feel like high-fiving yourself. You're like, fuck me. I literally got into the deepest space with myself and I, and I had the courage to do that. And that it builds trust. It builds trust. It, build, it build, builds self-worth. It builds self-love. It builds it all, right? So it's not a simple thing, even though it's kind of sometimes played out as a, just forgive, forgiveness is just about, is part of healing and just forgive that person, forgive that thing, forgive, write a letter of forgiveness. Sure, it all goes part way to that, 
but really understanding the power of that frequency is going to change everything. Having the intention that the power of that frequency is going to shift a lot for you, it's going to shift a lot for you. Um, yeah, so where were we? I went off on a little bit of a tangent there. Um, I've mentioned before that actually because it is a frequency, it spans across multi-dimensional realms as to all of our emotions as to all of our experiences as to all of our energetic imprints and conditionings right we are impacted by our other incarnations if you believe that right um we are impacted by our ancestral lineages we are impacted by the woundings that have occurred in our energetic fields in other times right so forgiving in this realm is one layer to forgive multi-dimensionally it takes this work to a much deeper level and activates a greater sense of peace right and that's what i'm going to be hoping to do in the in the workshops following this that are going to take it to a deeper level so today we are going to be before we go into the practice because we'll go into the practice in a minute i just want to look at the the chat and answer any questions that you might have but we're going to go into the practice of self-forgiveness in a moment okay uh, ba -ba -ba. makes sense tita you're in canada <laughs> Oh, like America and Canada are going through a cold snap, right? Like really cold. I shall not complain that I'm hot because the sun is so healing. Caitlin, yes, I'm stuck in a loop. My partner has literally said those words to me. He said, it's like I'm stuck on a carousel and I keep going back into the same loop. Okay, so we'll try and figure out what some of that loop is today, Caitlin. And I wonder whether you might have said already, I wonder whether anything that I've said has like had some aha moments with you uh Tina regrets are a big one for me to heal yes yeah all of us have regrets regret guilt such a wasted set of emotions because they don't go anywhere they're not grounded in anything they don't they don't they don't connect a loop they don't you know complete an energetic circuit they just pour energy out of you because they're not doing they're not giving you anything back they are literally guilt and and regret is just you're just leaking energy and um like you deserve more than that right you have so much energy that you deserve to kind of be looping it back into your system to give you this vitality to give you to give you to to amplify the electromagnetic field that you have to amplify you know your unique resonance so that you can start living from the highest best place that you can tina i love the story you're sharing the same one in your email yes <laughs> oh thank you i so resonate that this is what's sparking me to surrender more to my intuition thank you pleasure Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm glad it's resonating. I've had many different forgiveness healing sessions and participate in various activities, modalities, but there is still more for me to clear and heal. I feel this place with me. I like that. Yes. Well, you're here for a reason. This is what I wanted to say. Like everyone who's watching this replay live 10 years down the line, if it still exists in 10 years, whatever, you know what I mean? You're watching it for a reason. It has a message for you. It's your your higher self is consistently guiding you it's going to be guiding you no matter what but the more that you can clear that pathway of hearing that intuition of unblocking all of the nonsense that gets in the way that creates the static the more that you can achieve in your life because the more that you you hear that voice and you go all oh, right that's the next move all oh, right that's the next move all oh, right that's the next move what what may take have taken you five years to do will take you two weeks to do because you are much more in resonance with yourself a lot of time is wasted in our lives i waste just wasted 18 months a lot of time is wasted by just not being tuned in enough to trust and hear that space to hear that that voice of yours 
my loop has felt deadening. I'm tired of what I'm feeling. It's up and down. I want to live and feel alive. Well, that's the first step. That is the first step. You make that choice. That is the other thing. We make the decision. It begins and it ends with us. And a lot of the time, we don't like that responsibility because that means when it goes wrong, it's down to us. Or if it goes wrong, that's down to us. Or if it takes an unexpected turn, that's our fault. So it's easier to live in this bubble of I'm just going to let life kind of push me around and guide me where I need to go, even though it might not be in the in the direction that I should be going as a unique being. That's not my path, but I'll just bounce about in this space for a bit because it's it's easier than taking responsibility. But actually, you know, it's 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 so life affirming to 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 hear that knowing like when you say that I'm tired of what I'm feeling it's up and down I want to live and feel alive what is it that's going to make you live and feel alive you know what it is that's going to make you live and feel alive you know what it is that's keeping you stagnant really you all do whether you want to admit it to yourselves yet or not or whether it's still kind of in the shadows because it's safer for it to be in the shadows you will know you're just not choosing to 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 take that step because it seems as though it's more difficult to take it than it is to actually take it. Yes, and the knowing kind of feels scary. Exactly. Because you're like, shit, I have this power. I know. I have this power of knowing. I can't take that step. Because that's me fully stepping into my wholeness. What the fuck does that mean? Because we've not been taught to do that. We've not been taught to celebrate that. We've been taught to be small. It's easier for us to be small. It's easier for us to play by the rules. It's easier for us to just, like I said, just ping pong in this like, what was that game? Ah, oh, shit, what is it? When you were kids, ping, pinball, to pinball around in a pinball machine, being bounced around by life's different things that are just than to literally just go, no, I'm not going to ping around in a, a pinball machine anymore. I know this is what I should be doing. Or I have an inkling, even just an inkling, even if it's just a small like, do you know what? I need to start this course or I need to quit my job or I need to start eating this or I need to not be with this person anymore or I need to really look at the way I'm parenting my children, whatever. There is like, you will get micro moments of, of guidance that it's just start by taking those micro moments. Do you all feel as though there are things that you're not hearing, that you're not listening to, that your life, that your higher self is whispering to you? Is that something that you can resonate with? And if it's not, that's okay. Because sometimes, um, sometimes when I talk about these things, in workshops, a lot of people are like, oh, I don't even know what my intuition is. Oh my God, I don't even, I can't even hear that voice. I don't think I'm connected. It's just my mind. Is it not just my mind? Like forgiveness is the path to opening up that voice for it to become louder. So don't worry if you don't hear it. Even if it's just that gut knowing, the way that our intuition is described in this kind of um, spiritual world as well, it's described in so many ways, but sometimes it's described in a really non-tangible way that many people can't get a grasp of. You're constantly speaking to yourself in your mind, right? You're constantly hearing guidance from yourself and your mind. The, the hardest thing to do, and this is something that I will be doing in the future workshops, is discerning whether that voice is your intuition and is your highest self or it's your trauma speaking to you. Because for a very long time, I would be like, I'm only going to do workshops and hold workshops when it feels fully aligned, when it feels so good in my body, that is the only time I'm gonna do them. And it meant that I was like canceling shit left, right and center because it just didn't feel right in the moment until I realized like, it's not about feeling right. My anxiety is being triggered. 
and my body is telling me it's not safe but that's not the truth and I'm self-sabotaging myself and I really needed to heal that part of me and forgive that part of me that was doing that and forgive the situations that created that anxiety and that lack of self-trust in order for me to actually fully activate what the intuition was which was do the damn thing do the damn thing follow the thing through so if you don't feel as though um you can hear it don't worry. It's a practice. It's a, it's, it, you're constantly, it's, it's there constantly. You just need to hear the difference between your, your, um, your intuitive voice, your highest voice and your fear voice and your anxiety voice, your kind of unconscious voice. A couple of things, but I wonder if I could interpret them differently as I don't want to do the thing that I'm being told to do. <laughs> that you're telling yourself to do you're not being told out of outside of is that what you mean or is someone outside of you telling you what to do Emily or do you mean you 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 so yeah you don't want to do it and then you just this is about opening up dialogue with yourself right it's like do I not want to do this because it's not going to be good to do this or do I not want to do this because I'm fearful of it or is it because and then you go into deeper realms of like is this a self-sabotaging pattern? And yes, it is hard to really truly understand what self-sabotage and what is intuition and what is real true knowing. But sometimes part of the way of doing that is by just taking the action anyway, doing it, doing it and just seeing where that doing takes you. Because if it's not meant to happen, like for instance, coming to Costa Rica, if we weren't meant to be here, we would have known and we would have gone home and we would have like, yep, yeah, wasted some time, wasted some money, like shit would have, wouldn't have been great for a while, but we would, I would have scratched that itch to know. And I think, yeah, if self-sabotage is a big thing for you, then, then lean into that and be like, okay, this could be self-sabotage. So how much more can I back myself? How much more, well, how much more do I need to forgive myself in order to be able to stand up for myself, to trust myself, to be there for myself? What do I need to forgive in me? Why am I not supporting myself? You know, which big sigh, it's opening up a lot there, right? But it's baby steps as and when you need to take those baby steps. Lucy says, yes. Tina says, yes. Caitlin, yes, because life actually flows then rather than meeting resistance. Exactly. So if you've had experience of life flowing when you followed that intuition, then, then you know. And the more that you do it, it's like practice. It's practice. The more that you do it, the more that you experience that. And so the more you feel confident doing it. I got to the place of saying yes to Costa Rica, not with my first dance with intuition and following it. I've been doing this for 16 years, more. I did it as a child. We all did it as children. Like, and I was consciously doing it for the last 16 years, building, 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 building. But it, you know, and that's why I teach it because if I need to take 16 years to get to this point and I can help somebody do it much quicker, then we're in a better place, right? Okay, if anyone has any questions, about anything that we've spoken about, let me know um, or wants to share anything. Um, otherwise, we're going to go into the practice. Lucy, I wonder if this is relevant. One of the reasons I stop myself is that I feel that I'm being driven by my ego. If the thing leads to validation, affirmation, which feels good, is that a reason not to do it? If it's external, right? This is all so nuanced, right? So for example, if there's, if there's a need or a want for external validation, or if there's a need or a want to do something because the ego is going to feel success because someone has applauded them or they've made a shit ton of money because of that success. If it's pointing to an external validation rather than an internal validation, then I would question it, right? Because you don't need external validation. You're looking for external validation because you're not meeting your internal validation, right? 
you can keep externally looking for validation and externally looking for worth which is what this whole materialistic life is about, right? The more money I have, the, be the better a person or the more successful I am. The more nice clothes I have, the better person I am. The better job that I have, the better person I am. The more that we look to validate ourselves externally is pointing to a lack of internal validation. So how can you internally validate yourself or begin to internally validate yourself more? So if you're stopping yourself because you're looking for external validation from it, how can you, like, doesn't mean don't do the thing. It means do the thing, but don't do it because you're looking for people to, to applaud you for doing it. Do it for your own internal reasons. Do it because they're good reasons for you to do it. Does that answer the question? Caitlin, I know that that resonated with you as well. Does that make sense? And if you want to like come in with a, an actual example, that might help um, with the explanation. Okay, it does. Okay, good. Like everything that is a, looking towards an external validation is because we're not meeting our internal validation. So feel free to keep putting questions in, um, in the chat box, but we are going to go into this practice now. So the practice is broken into two, two two areas. I want you to take five minutes. I'm going to just time five minutes for you to write down all the ways that you feel that you need to forgive yourself, right? It may be, you know, for all the times that you didn't stand up for yourself. It may be for the time that the times that you abandoned and didn't honor your inner child. It may be something that you've done as a mother, because we've all done, you know, so many things. <laughs> as mothers, if we're mothers, um, that we need to forgive ourselves for. It may be not meeting your own needs. It may be not trusting yourself. It may be a way that you've behaved. It may be a way that you treated somebody else. It may be the things that you didn't follow through on. It may be decisions that you made that you were, when you were younger. It may be decisions that you've made that have led you down a path that has led you to this restriction that you're feeling. It Just write free write for five minutes absolutely everything that comes to you just with this kind of intention of where do I desire to bring the frequency of forgiveness to myself I'm just going to give you five minutes to do that and then I'll be back
Okay. So if you just start to kind of wrap that up, I know five minutes isn't the longest time, but that is something that you can continue on with in your own time. I know sometimes it's easier to do it in a space like this because you're being held, you're being guided, you're being supported. Um, but if you feel like you need to keep going with it, keep going with it in your own time. And if you do want to take this work a lot deeper, at the end, I'm going to just explain briefly how you can join the next few workshops and what they're going <clears> to <throat> be focusing on. Um, so you have started to shift the energy, move the energy towards the awareness of forgiveness for yourself. And just know that whatever's coming up in this moment for you is destined to come up, right? The reason that you're here is because you're here for that reason, right? You may not rush, rationally understand it now. It might not make complete sense, um, but your higher self, like I keep saying, is always guiding you. And there is so much magic when we can connect to that multidimensional sense of self, right? because we can see and hear and know that we're not in alone and that we are in relationship with the highest part of ourselves, right? And so the more that we can cultivate that relationship, even if it is literally just sitting down with yourself for 10 minutes a day and, and free writing and journaling, like it has this really cliched energy around it, right? But it's so powerful, powerful ultimately to bring yourself into communion with that higher version of yourself. So We've done that now just for the for these five um, minutes, but that's got the energy shifted and moving. And I'm going to take you into a deeper healing if you desire to, um, where we're going to be connecting to your heart and allowing your heart and the unconscious frequency that you may not realize is creating stagnancy to show itself to you. To, to And this is like the, the backbone of the work that I do is this unconscious communication with, uh, with sorry, conscious communication with those unconscious parts of you, which you don't necessarily um, know are ruling, ruling your life or creating your reality. So if everyone's ready, get yourself into a really comfortable position. Allow yourself to close down the eyes. I'm actually going to just move over here. It doesn't matter. Hopefully you can still hear me. There's howler monkeys in the background. Okay. So closing your eyes and beginning deep breathing. In through the nose. Exhaling through the mouth. Just all the while, just connecting to this intention of forgiveness, this frequency of forgiveness. With your inhale, inhale forgiveness. With your slow exhale through the mouth, just exhaling resentment. Inhaling the powerful frequency of forgiveness. Allowing that move into your heart space. And just feeling and seeing that denser energy of resentment leaving the body as you exhale. Inhaling that high vibrational light frequency of forgiveness. Allowing it to fill the heart feeling and visualizing the heart space opening and expanding just to take in more of that forgiveness frequency and exhaling through the mouth, dense, heavy resentment, guilt, pain, shame, stagnancy. And just continuing to do this for a couple more breaths. highest vibration of light and forgiveness into the heart space. Maria, you froze. Oh, oh no. Okay, I'm gonna move back over here. <laughs> I'm sorry. 
Am I back? Yes, yeah, that's better. We were still doing the breathing, so we're still early in. Thank you for letting me know. So coming back, if I'm back, just continuing to breathe in through the nose, breathing in that high vibrational frequency of forgiveness, allowing that frequency of forgiveness to fill the heart space, to expand the heart space. And then attaching all the denser emotions to the exhale and allowing that exhale to exit the body, taking that frequency with it. And bringing your awareness into the heart. And as you're consciously breathing that forgiveness into the heart space, just noticing how the heart's responding, just connecting with the heart, seeing it, visualizing it, feeling it, hearing it, feeling it. Bringing your full awareness to your heart as it receives this light, as it receives this frequency of forgiveness as you have intended it to do so. Your heart is your frequency. Your heart is your lifeline. How often do we connect with our heart? How often do we bring, bring compassion to our heart? How often do we bring the intention of connection to our heart? It's always there. It's always beating. It's always providing you with your electromagnetic field. It's always providing love. Just coming into deep gratitude for the heart, deep love for the heart. And we're just going to communicate with the heart and allow the heart to show us in whichever way it wants to, through memory, through sound, through visual, just through a knowing. Just show us what it needs support with to heal by way of the frequency of forgiveness. What part of your heart, what part of you is asking for forgiveness? What version of you is asking for forgiveness? And just allow your energy field, your internal landscape, your heart to show you what needs your attention now with this frequency of forgiveness. And if you're struggling to conjure up a connection, uh, an answer to this, just continue with the breathing. Forgiveness frequency into the heart, allowing the heart to expand and exhaling the denser frequencies that are coming up, the, res the resistance, the resentment, just feeling that leaving on the exhale. And just with that intention of your inner landscape, just to show you what version of you is requiring your attention, is requiring your forgiveness now.
And if your internal world is in fact speaking with you, is speaking to you, is showing you, just allow that visual to open up, to become more dynamic, to become more vibrant. Who is that version of you? What does she look like? What timeline is she in? Is she young, old, what age? What is she doing? Where is she? Like just seeing her like a movie, if you can, playing out in front of you, this part of you that's calling for the attention of forgiveness, the frequency of forgiveness. And if you can make her kind of big in your visual, just enhance her visual and allow yourself now to step into that, that movie, into that film, right? So that your awareness is now in that time and space with her. And just see yourself stepping into that time with her. And gently make yourself known to her. Let her know that you're an aspect of her, that you're here to answer her call that she needs, that she's been calling out for, that part of her that's crying out for forgiveness. And just let her know you're here answering that call and ask her to share with you what she desires forgiveness for. Letting her know that it's safe for her to be seen and heard and witnessed in this moment. Giving her as much time as she needs to be seen and heard. Allow her to tell you the story. Allow her to safely share those feelings of resentment or pain or guilt or jealousy, whatever they may be. She may feel embarrassed. She may feel stupid. She may feel untrustworthy. She may have abandoned herself from this point, from this action. And when she's finished speaking to you, I want you to respond to her and offer her, if you can, if you feel that it resonates, the forgiveness that she's seeking. Open up that dialogue with her. Let her know she's been seen. Let her know she's been heard. Validate her emotions. It's okay for her to feel this way. It's safe for her to feel this way. If you can offer her up that frequency of forgiveness truly from your heart to her. Forgive her for what she desires to be forgiven for. The actions that she took, the things that she said, things that she did and didn't do. The way that she behaved. The person that she became.
offer her love. See her in her worth. Let her know that this thing that she is seeking forgiveness for doesn't define her. That she is so much more than that. That we are all human, that we all make mistakes. That she is still lovable. That she is more than worthy. And anything else that you feel the desire to communicate with her. And then asking her if she's ready to drop all of the negative feelings she's held about herself because of this is she ready to drop the resistance the resentment whatever pain it brought up for her to be holding on to this experience emotion way of being what she needed the forgiveness for is she able to drop the guilt If she isn't, then ask her what she needs in order to be ready and give it to her. Does she need more of an explanation? Does she need more of an understanding of her worth? What does she need and can you give it to her? But if she is ready, Then I want you to visualize beautiful golden white healing light above both of your crowns, above both of those energetic bodies. And that white light moving down through the crowns, both of those heads of yours, and just flooding your entire body with this crystalline healing frequency of the highest, most organic love and light which is just transmuting and releasing, transmuting and healing the density in the body of those lower vibrational frequencies. And just seeing that light just swirling around in your entire body and in her entire energetic body from the bottom of your feet all the way to the top of your head and just allowing that energy from source to purify any density associated with this resentment that we've cleared. And just then see that light and just pour out the soles of your feet and move down into Mother Earth, just taking, transmuting it all and taking it out of your body. And moving it down into Mother Earth. And just breathing into your body. Thanking that version of you for this moment. For this moment of forgiveness that you've gifted yourself. And just allowing her when she's ready to fade away, but staying in your heart space. And just allowing your heart to show you the frequency that has opened up for you with that clearing. What energy has that opened up for you? Is it a little bit more confidence? Is it more love? Is it more worth? Is it more trust? What frequency have you closed the loop on? What frequency have you activated in your energy field now? By moving through that process of forgiveness, 
by allowing that frequency to heal part of your heart. And just allow that new frequency, breathe it into the body, allow it to embed itself into your body, embody it, breathe it in. So if it's confidence or love, whatever it is, just breathe in the frequency, the feeling that your heart is giving you. And as you exhale, just allow it to ground into each and every cell in your body, activate it in your light body activate it in your energy field you've just transmuted a denser energy into a higher frequency through the power of forgiveness in your body that's how powerful you are as an energetic being and now allow your heart to show you what opportunities can open up for you now now that you've shifted your frequency what opportunities have opened up for you and allow the wisdom of your body to show you and give you one action that you can take in your waking living world in your reality that can support that opportunity that can support this shift in frequency that can help you build a level of self-trust with your intuition? What's an action that you can take? It may be tiny, it might be huge. Everyone's gonna have a unique experience. And just breathe that in, allow it to sink in. Take a moment to thank your heart. Take take a moment to thank your highest self. Take a moment to thank that version of you that showed up. Take a moment to thank you now in this moment for being here, for doing this, for answering that call. And just take a deep breath into the body and just bring yourself back into awareness of this present moment, the seat that you're sitting on, the noises that you can hear around you. And just slowly and gently pull yourself out of your inner realm and bring your awareness back into your present reality. I'd love to know how that was for you guys. I don't need to know intimate details if it's not something that you want to share. Um, But just letting me know how it was, if it touched something for you, if you were able to activate that frequency, bearing in mind this was just a free workshop. So this isn't as deep as you can go. This is just a tidbit of where you can lead yourself. So I'm hoping that you were able to feel the power of your intention, feel the power of you being able to activate that frequency of forgiveness in a different way and applying it. And I hope that you get to to take whatever action you were given and actually apply it. Often we don't, but that's also part of closing the loop is taking the action. We can have all of the divine inspiration that we want in life but until we start taking that action um, in our reality then not much changes very powerful I feel a shift in my heart oh wonderful I'm so pleased thank you for sharing that I felt a shift thank you Maria thank you Lucy okay good I'm glad it's resonating that you're feeling something Um, if this entire workshop has brought something up to the surface that you feel uncomfortable with then please feel free to email me so you know part of my duty of care is that this is obviously um 
it's deep work that we're doing in a workshop that's online so it's 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 part of my duty of care to open up um uh, my attention to you outside of this space if you feel that you need it if it's triggered something or if you, if you need to share something with me then come and email me and I'm there for you so please do not hesitate to do that if you need me part of me can't find the right words it felt good to release and go through the process okay good you feel lighter I'm glad Tina thank you thank you for being here um um so yeah that comes to the end of this workshop I'm just going to quickly share and it's very basic information so far because I haven't gone into the details but I am going to be doing more deep in-depth energy work within this kind of space with the frequency of forgiveness and different aspects of ourselves so I'm going to be doing one around the inner child um, forgiving our relationship with our inner child forgiving our caregivers relationships with our child this is really deep and potent work um Emily yes no words but a feeling not even sure what the feeling is not good not bad okay we'll feel into it for a little bit and if please email me and Emily is that yeah I want you to email me and let me know how you feel in the next 24 hours anytime with you I leave feeling more connected and more at peace thank you Lucy um so yeah I'm going to be going more in depth and doing deeper healings with the inner child and the mother wound and the father wound and and that whole aspect of of us um I'm also going to be doing um, more into a past life kind of healings and past life forgiveness and looking at the different facets of that and and what that might mean because it's not as easy as being like oh I had this past life or this past life it we we, we can go deeper into it and look at the 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 identities more deeply and notice how they affect us in this life if that's something that you resonate with and also ancestrally going through ancestral woundings through our ancestral lineages the epigenetics of what's held within our mother line what's held within our father line um and forgiving those aspects because like i said those deeper rooted um linchpins are all held together by, by our inability to forgive or are in action with forgiveness so we may have done ancestral healing I know I've done shit tons of ancestral healing but until I went into the forgiveness aspect there was a different layer of, of healing that happened um, and I'm also going to do one that's directly around self-sabotage um, and not honoring ourselves and not trusting ourselves and I think and now being guided I can hear it to do one around intuition and just really concentrate on activating that um, trust and guidance in our highest self so I'm gonna I'll send out some emails about that and those of you that want to join I would love to have you but if not again all good I'm just glad that you've got something from this if you've got something from this um, I'd love to hear if you can if you care to send me an email and just let me know how this was for you, just a bit more in depthly, then I would love to hear. Just because I haven't done one of these workshops for, for nearly for like 18 months now, <laughs> since this whole shift. So um, even for me, this was a process. Even for me, just doing this was a process of forgiveness. So it all comes full circle anyway. So thank you for being here. Unless anyone has anything else they need to ask. We can close this circle. We can close this moment. Um, thank you for being here with all of your energy and just sending you love moving forwards. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Tina. <laughs> Mwah.